your job um, with the air ambulance, is, is that something that has sort of instructed you with regards to stress and anxiety and, and dealing with high pressure situations as well? Yeah, so I think, I think pressure is something I've grown up with. So, yeah. uh, and these guys here can all attest to that. You, you, you Don't know if we can. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's, it, it's all relative, you know. I, I've lived in this, you know, whatever for all my life. So I only know this way. So it's important if you only know one way to go out and look for other opinions and other ideas mm -hmm. to kind of broaden that and understand and, and work out that what I think is, is that what everyone else thinks and is that how, how do other people cope with that? How do other people do stuff differently? And it's important to have lots of different opinions and different um, advice and, and, and people to, to, to steer you. But I think the bit I found very difficult about the air ambulance was, was the emotional side. So I haven't come from the military where, again, your emotions are to be put to one side. And I've seen plenty of uh, guys who've left the army having done some serious tours in Afghanistan, Iraq, and places like that, who it only hits them once they've left because they just keep moving on, moving on, moving on, and eventually they, they break at the end of it. They just sort of fall out of the bus, you know, on their face, mm. and, and their sort of bus drives off and they're just left on the side of the road mm. and they've got to pick themselves up, they've got to sort themselves out. So then going into the Aramis world, which was a much more um, open and actually in some cases very raw, emotional day-to-day -day stuff where you're dealing with families who are having the worst news they could ever possibly have on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. It leaves you with a very depressing, very negative feeling where you think, Death is just around the door everywhere I go. And that's quite a, it's quite a burden to carry and, and feel. And I felt that with a few jobs that I did where there were particular sort of personal resonations with the families that I was dealing with. And so that, that raw emotion, just, I just thought, listen, I, can't, I, can't, I could feel it brewing up inside me and I could feel it was going to take its toll and be a real problem. Um, and I had to speak about it. And that's where the sort of, this, I'm very happy to talk openly about how I feel about certain things because at the end of the day, when you see somebody at death's door with their family all around them, there is no, there is no, you know, there's, it's a very hard thing to describe because you share, even though you don't necessarily know the individual or the family, you share someone's pain because we all do. Mm. We all have families, we can all relate to it. And that's the thing here with mental health is that we can all relate to, to mental health. We, ha we see it day to day all around us. We've just all got to go, let's talk about it. We've got to have that one extra conversation that we might not do. We've got to make that one bit of time mm. to deal with it before moving on. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong.